What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Always Compete Seahawks podcast. I am Sam. That is Mike. Very exciting yet nervous time for us Seahawks fans because the Seahawks First game. season is kicked off tomorrow in, in my time and actually for everybody's time because all hours are the same. I just realized <laughs> it's, it's kicking off in. If my math is correct, well, about for you guys watching an hour, it'll be this will come out an hour before the game. Yeah, so, yeah, but for us, it's kicking off in about four, 14 and a half hours. Yeah, yeah 14, fourteen and a half. Yeah, hours. Um, but you guys are lucky. You guys only have to wait another hour. Yeah, we're we're over here. You know. Yeah. Twiddling our thumbs. It's like Christmas Eve. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna be very, very. I'm very excited. I, I don't mm-hmm. know why I said I will be. I am very excited. Colts game preview. This is what you guys can kind of expect from us for our schedule throughout the season. We're really going to be, now that we're out of the offseason, we're really just going to be doing videos that are game previews and game recaps. Yep. You should expect a game recap on um, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, somewhere around that. The game after, the day after the game probably is what you should expect. Yeah, and expect game recaps. I mean, expect, expect game previews anytime mm-hmm. throughout the week. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm very excited. Uh, we have six categories we'll be talking about to do this Colts preview. I'm going to begin starting with a starting with the category of injuries. Mm-hmm. This is this is good for the Seahawks here. Let's just put it that way. The Seahawks have no players ruled out. Now, by NFL rules, they'll have to have six players inactive. Who those players will be, I don't really know. It could it'll probably just be some random players, but Yeah. Um yeah, the Seahawks will have at least six players inactive, but no players out because of injury besides just the awesome. On the IR. Just awesome. Yeah, great. Um I'm uh, but going to the Colts. We both thought that Quentin Nelson and Carson Wentz were not going to play. Mm-hmm. They are playing. Confirmed play. However, does not mean that the Colts are not missing any important players. They do not have their starting left tackle, Eric Fisher, who was reportedly making a push to play despite tearing his Achilles less than like six months ago. Yeah, pretty much like six months ago, yeah. Yeah, so less than six months ago, tears his Achilles. He's now, or I mean, like less than seven, eight months ago, trying to come back. He almost got in, apparently. I saw a lot of people saying that they thought he was going to play. He did not end up playing. Good news. Culture believes, I believe, are starting LaRaven Clark. The fact that we have no idea who that is is good for us. Yeah. So, and then, but the big one, actually, there's two big ones. T.Y. Hilton has long been inactive. He's on the long-term IR with a, a neck injury back, a, neck. Like a neck or a back injury it's like it's like right here i think it's like right here it's, it's, it's like a weird like disc yeah thing. yeah and uh he's out the colt's best weapon is not playing good news for us but then the biggest news for, in my opinion is xavier rhodes is inactive that's big that's big because i don't know if you guys know this he was their a their number one corner and b they do not have a lot of corner depth. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Rock Yassin will be likely starting against Metcalf. I like that matchup. I really like that matchup for us. Which is just... Mwah. Chef's kiss. And Mike, that will perfectly segue into our discussion about keys to the offensive game. Where I'm just going to give my opinion real, real fast before you dive in. Mm-hmm. I think we should go all out at these corners. Let them have yeah. it. Yeah. We have maybe the best uh, weapons in the NFL. Let them have it. Go ahead. I, Just... I can't disagree. I think the offensive keys to the game, uh, you have to look at the Colts' defense and what they're really good at. And, you know, we talked to um, Christopher Kidd literally in our time about an hour ago. Uh, go check out that episode, by the way, if you haven't already. But uh, what he said is, and what he was talking to, you know, guys who work with the Colts, the front seven is very good. Darius Leonard, all pro. DeForest Buckner, all pro. They got a couple other solid linebackers. They got a couple, uh, you know, really, really good pass rushers. So the front seven is the key to their defense. D 
defensive back wise, they're not great. You just mentioned Xavier Rhodes is not going to play. That is huge for the Seahawks. So if I am Shane Waldron, I am attacking, attacking, attacking that secondary. You have the receivers to do it. You got the quarterback to do it. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to do it. Now on the other side, running the ball, what we're going to, I think the key is if we're going to be able to run the ball effectively, we're going to have to run the ball through the tackles. We're going to have to get those tough yards where it's third and two and we just got to go and we just got to push the ball. We got to get big. We got to pile some people over. Chris Carson is a running back that has shown the capability to do that. I think the key in that aspect is going to be our offensive line. We've got a couple new guys. Uh, Kyle Fuller's new fa- uh, Kyle new- Fuller is new to that starting center position. Gabe Jackson's a new addition. We know what we have from Shell and Brown and Damian Lewis. Our offensive line has to be great. They have to come out of the gate pushing people around and rag down people. If we can run the ball effectively and we could push the ball down the field with our great receivers, our offense should be just fine today. But we have to make sure that we block DeForest Buckner and we have to make sure that Darius Leonard is not a big factor in this game for their defense. 100 what limit players kind of the key from what Mike said they have playmakers on defense mm-hmm. speaking of defense I, I will be taking the defensive keys Mike before I dive in do you have anything that you immediately comes to mind defensive keys a guy named Jamal Adams it's going to be a key in this one that's my that's my key to the game nice my key is to make Carson Wentz uncomfortable mm-hmm Carson last year when he was under pressure, you kind of saw it last year. Mm-hmm. He threw like twenty interceptions and he didn't and he only started like twelve games. Yeah. If we can make Carson Wentz uncomfortable, like taking away the run game, which in recent history we have been good at. Once again, that kind of returns to how does KJ Wright affect that? I think Jordan Brooks is a very good run stuffer. Hopefully, God please for your cost, there will not be any let, it will be a somewhat smooth transition between the run stuffers with Jordan Brooks and KJ Wright. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like if we could take away that run game of Jonathan Taylor, who's a certified like workhorse. Yeah, he's a dog. He's a dog. Like, I don't know if you guys watched him at Wisconsin. He's built to carry the ball 20, 30 times a game without issue. He can do that. If yeah. we can take away that run game with guys like Jamal Adams, Puna Ford and Al Woods stuffing that middle and having, you know, Bobby Wagner, Jordan Brooks, even Daryl Taylor, guys who are fast and can move. I think that if we could take away the run game, force Carson Wentz to throw without them having their best weapon on offense. Mm -hmm. And then especially if we can add pressure, we're going to have Carlos Dunlap lining up versus a backup left tackle. Let's pressure his blind side. Mm -hmm. Make him sweat a little bit because then – he will have to make a decision quick. Yep. Making a decision quick leads to turnovers. 100% agree. Let's, let's make Carson Wentz uncomfortable, force him to throw the ball that he does not want to throw. That's my yeah. key for, Car- for I totally agree. Getting after the quarterback just in general is the key to any defense. But I think especially considering uh, we're going against Carson Wentz, a guy who is very turnover prone. Uh, people like to point out, yeah, oh, he had an MVP caliber season in 2017. His offensive line was like the best in the NFL that league. He had all day to throw. Um, when he hasn't had time to throw it throughout his career, like last year, um, he was bad. He threw a lot of interceptions. He fumbled. He made some really bad decisions. So we have to make Carson Wentz uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, not even, I'm not even saying we need to get sacks necessarily, but we need to get pressures. We need to get in his face. Uh, exactly. That is going to be 100% a key. So kind of transitioning into what we want to see on defense and who is going to be kind of a key player in that aspect, defensively and offensively. My key player, I mentioned this previously, my key player for this game is Jamal Adams for a couple of reasons. Number one, Jamal Adams is now mostly healthy. We saw, I saw his press conference today. He's got a little bit of a finger issue, minor. Jamal Adams is healthy. Is he going to be that guy that's just, out there flying around, making plays, good in coverage, can stuff the run, can rush the passer a little bit? Or is he going to be a guy that's very limited? So I'm very – I'm going to key in on Jamal Adams because specifically in this game, but through the whole season, he is going to be a very important figure for us defensively. 
And if he's out there tomorrow and he's making plays, he's flying around, he's shutting the Colts down, I feel very good about our defense going forward. And I feel very good about what positive impact Jamal Adams can have. So Jamal Adams is my key player to watch for for tomorrow. Yeah, my player, or maybe I'll say player, I have the interior of the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Forrest Buckner is a definitive problem. He's like Aaron Donald. DeForest Buckner, like right, right, right there. It's and DeForest Buckner is at least five inches taller. He, yeah, he's a gargantuan of a human. I think he's like yep. six seven. Six yeah, he's inches. massive. Pressure up the middle is the worst pressure you can have because you can't step up when there's pressure coming off the edge. Russ can just step up, even find a little lane and scoot mm-hmm. out and throw the ball. The worst, the worst nightmare for an offensive line, especially with me playing offensive line, is when pressure gets up the middle. Quarterback tries to step up, runs into a wall. He has to roll outside the defensive end. Quarterback is sacked. Yeah. If we, if Gabe Jackson and Kyle Fuller and Damian Lewis can just hold their own for like three, three seconds. Even if it's even if it's just like a little a clip, just to slow him down, so Russ has a little bit more time to evade and find that guy. That's all we're asking. Just please, you know, make sure that we can solidify the front that front wall of the offensive line that we are going to really need. That's kind of my key. Point. And I totally agree on Jamal Adams. I think Jamal Adams, when he plays well, our defense is one of the best in the NFL. So I totally agree with you on that. Moving yeah. on to. What we want to see from the Seahawks. This is not necessarily player wise. This is kind of what maybe like group wise. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like a specific player. Like, of course, I want to see Carlos Dunlap. I would love to see Russell Wilson throw five touchdowns. Of course. Right. Everybody wants to see that. But this is kind of what we want to see, whether it's play calling or, yeah. you know, just execution or stats or anything like that, or even like a rotation that we might see. What I want to see is. Let the corners prove their worth. Mm-hmm. DJ Reed has consistently said this off season that that the that the disrespect that these corners have been getting, he's been seeing it, and it pisses him off because he thinks that they have a top tier corner room. Prove it. Yep. Make ter- cause turnovers. If if the ball is in the air, swat it down, high point it, do anything. Just. Corner issues in the past, especially in the seasons. Prove that you are a guy. Prove mm-hmm. that you can prove that you can those plays and back up what you've been saying for the last couple months about oh the respect not good. You know, I hate respect. It's 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 annoying. Prove that the disrespect isn't one. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's very important for us. Um, a thing that I want to see, and I've been saying this, I've been hand on the table pounding for this ever since he was hired. I want to see the new offense under Shane Waldron. I want to see those jet sweeps. I want to see pre-snap motions. I want to see play action. I want to see creative ways to involve, you know, D. Eskridge and Tyler Lockett and maybe Freddie Swain, DK. I want to see that creative and that juice from that offensive uh, philosophy that Shane Waldron's going to bring, that's what I want to see. Please, I want to see something more than halfback dive or all go routes for on offense. Um, Shane Waldron's new offense is from the Rams. We all know the Rams run a very good offensive system. So I want that for my Seahawks, and I am dying to see. I've been, I've been, every time we talk about Shane Waldron, I bring him this offense. I'm so excited for it. I need to see this fresh new offense. 100 percent i mean that's kind of like the second to see just you know prove why we hired you bring some innovation reverses Mm -hmm. quick passes play action the whole shebang that's what i want to see from the offense especially kind of finishing off now to our official predictions yep this is this is the big kahuna of the video this is this is what everybody wants to know Mike, I'm going to let you give your prediction first. Score and so, uh, who's going to win. 
so just to preface this, um, for those who bet out there, the Seahawks are currently listed as two and a half point favorites. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. I don't think the Colts are a bad team. And I don't think the Seahawks are unbelievable, unequivocally better in every category. So I do think it'll be close. Colts have a good head coach. Uh, I do think the Seahawks win. I'm going to take 28 to 24. I think the Seahawks win. And I think the Seahawks cover. I'll take the Seahawks 28 to 24. And I want to add this. Give a player of the game. It doesn't have to be the player that plays the best. Give a player think either might surprise or it could be Russell Wilson if you think he's going to throw four touchdowns. But my play of the game in terms – I think it's going to be DK Metcalf because when you look at their corners, I mean, we, we can't say it enough. Xavier Rhodes' loss is so big for them. Do you really trust Rocky Asin or whoever else they put out there to just be on an island against DK Metcalf? I don't personally. I think the only person that can unequivocally shut down DK Metcalf is probably Jalen Ramsey. So if Russ and the offense just decide to force feed him the ball, which I think they should, then I think DK is going to have a huge day. Yeah, totally. My prediction is that I think the Seahawks are going to be able to put up points, but I also think the Colts will not lay down. I say the Seahawks probably range in the area of 30 points. I have the Seahawks, and like you said, covering, I have 30 to 24. 30 to 24. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to really come down to if, if it's close and it's crunch time, who do you want? Who do you think is going to win? Yeah. Then and, we have Russell Wilson. Yeah. So. And Indy is not, Indy, not to disrespect Indianapolis, but it, having them having home field advantage isn't huge. Like, it's not like Green Bay. It, 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 yeah. It's not like if Arrow like that. Right. Where Right. There's a definitive home field advantage. I mean, sure, home field's great. Awesome. If you yeah. want it, go ahead. I mean, unless yeah. they ain't putting up decibel, I don't I don't really care. If your so, fans ain't causing an earthquake, we don't care. And it's and it's indoors. So it's right. like a, a cool like state of grace. Yeah. And you know and, and for my point of the game, kind of wrapping up here. I, I, I think it's going to be a defensive player. Ooh. I'm – damn. Damn. This is – I don't know. Something is just attracting me to Carlos Dunlap. There you go. I, 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 say, that, I say that the Seahawks probably try to line him up over the, that backup left tackle as much as they can. I'm not saying mm-hmm. obviously like in every play because that's not really how it works. But as much as they can – which I think will be a decent amount. And I think Carlos Dunlap being that veteran, being huge, can easily overwhelm a backup tackle. Yeah. I got Car- I, I got Carlos Dunlap. I say he probably puts up two sacks um, in a nice, healthy Seahawks win. That is our predictions, and that is our game preview for week one. Woo. Expect 17 more videos like this, guaranteed. I mean, 16 guaranteed. more videos like this. 17, because of the playoff game, minimum one. So well, at least 17. Well, well, like I said, guaranteed. 16 games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 100% have, have 16. Yep. Hopefully we do 19 more? I'd love 20. Yeah, I mean. Well, 19 because we have first round by. I like your thinking, Sam. Let's go, yeah, baby. 19 more. That's what we're going for. We appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.